The Whips have agreed that the next business shall be paragraph four of items for decision, report number one, the budget and the council tax for 2016-17. I now move reception of that report and paragraph. An amendment to the paragraph has been circulated in the chamber. Can I ask councillors Carpenter and Eileen Khan to move and second their amendment? Formally moved. Formally seconded. I have agreed to the request from Councillor Carpenter to be allowed to speak up to 10 minutes on this item. Councillor Senior. perhaps at least two uh, slight, slight sign perhaps of light at the end of the tunnel the first is that we have a secretary of state who doesn't actively hate local government uh, but actually seems to have a little bit of understanding and appreciation uh, for what we do the second is that we have been offered a four year settlement by government and although that settlement is not very good at least we know where we are and we're not at the risks we have been over many years of the, uh, of the government uh, changing things at the last moment. So we know what's going to happen until 2020. We don't know what's going to happen after that. It is a real uh, unknown unknown, or we know it's going to be a new system. But until then, we do have a degree of certainty. And that is why, looking at the amount of money we have now, at the pressures on our budgets and everything else, I think it is now appropriate uh, to increase the council tax by 1.99% as we can, and to add the 2% in the so-called social care precept. It's not really a precept at all, um, but that's what the governments have chosen uh, to call it. And there are, of course, particular uh, stresses and strains in that area as the increased costs of care uh, continue to go up uh, beyond inflation. At the same time, however, we are lucky enough still to be able to say uh, to the people who want us that actually next year your council tax will be going down. And that's due not to, to us, uh, but to the good work uh, done by the Mayor of London. Uh, we've had eight years of no, either no increases at all, either, uh, so it's been declining in, in real t terms, and this year a, a clear decrease. Uh, let us hope on May the 3rd we'll continue to have a, a Conservative Mayor of London who will continue those policies. We all remember how only, when he had to spend a, the spendaholic Livingston in power, how the precepts went up way above uh, the, any sort of inflation year upon year. In this case, over the last eight years, the precept has been kept fixed and, what's more, we've seen not a decline in services provided by the Mayor of London, but an improvement in services in virtually all cases. So that is my recommendation to the Council. Can we briefly turn now to the uh, Labour Party amendment, which I think is worthwhile uh, talking about it. First of all, the reference in uh, uh, the inser insertion of the new uh, paragraph C. Well, in fact, the government always, is always requiring us to spend this money on social care. It's presumed there'll be some sort of audit. Uh, so it seems to me that this is unnecessary. It's not really a case of increasing expenditure. It's a, a question, actually, of covering the extra increases in our costs that I've already referred to. Then we move on to paragraph D. I find it slightly surprising, actually, when at our last meeting we discussed uh, putting forward some money to resolve some of the issues in uh, our children's services. The Labour Party said we shouldn't do that until we had a clear and costed plan to do so, even though some of those uh, expenditure it was already very clearly needed to cover some of the staffing changes. Again here, the Labour Party now seems to reverse that position and suggest we should automatically put that money uh, forward. We've been very clear this evening and elsewhere that if it does need to be extra money spent on this service to sort out the issues identified for Ofsted, then that will be done. It may be £1 million, it may be more, it may well be less, because at least one of the few good things in the Ofsted report, and I've most certainly read it, is it did point out that staffing levels and work rate levels were appropriate. 
It wasn't the case, it seems, of there not being enough money, but of other problems uh, that existed. And then we get onto this very vague paragraph D, uh, E, uh, which proposes all sorts of increases, not very clear on how it should be spent, but completely open-ended, completely no control. And finally, this thing at the end, oh, well, let's just fund it from contingencies. That is not the way budgets should be run. They should not be run in such a vague way. Over very many years, we've had, I think, very good and excellent financial control in this authority. And even with uh, the increase that we, I am proposing tonight, it will still mean substantial, substantial capital programme, healthy reserves, uh, and, like, and a balanced budget. Those are the things we have to do. Those are the things that we should do. And I absolutely welcome those tonight. Thank you. Councillor Critchard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm just going to say, as far as Councillor Senior is concerned, I suspect we probably will still have a Conservative Mayor on May the 3rd. What will happen on May the 5th and 6th might be slightly different. Okay, um, what I'm going to say is we have a motion in front of us to increase Wandsworth Council's tax. Most local people believe that their council tax pays for all local services. On the contrary, as Councillor Senior has said, most of the funding is from large grants from central, of, from central government. And the grants have been cut to zero in 2020. So therefore, Wandsworth has got to think the unthinkable and raise the council tax to start to address the funding gap. And actually, I find it very interesting that this year the mayor has chosen to re reduce his tax in an election year. No link, I suppose. Anyway, Wandsworth wants more money. They always say, oh, trust us, we're really good with money. We just need a bit more. We're not saying why. And that's why our amendment specifically asks that Wandsworth Council commit to spending the money on focused projects, because we don't trust them to manage their accounts properly. And here's, the exam here's an example. The Children's Services Budget have reported an overspend of 2.76 million this financial year. That's a 10% drift on the budget. That's a lot of drift. And this 2.76 million didn't come to light until February 2016, five, six weeks before financial year end, too late to start to mitigate the effects. Budget variations of half a, million, half a million should come to committee for scrutiny. So unless the overspend was generated through an excess of Christmas buying, we actually now know it wasn't, it should have been reported earlier. And in fact, in the answer to question 14, the cabinet member knew there was an overspend in October, looked at it, wasn't, but it wasn't reported. I actually also looked quite hard at the paper that's mentioned. Um, the, un the, un the overspend appears in it, but there is no minutes about what was agreed to happen about this overspend. Nothing is minuted in that report. And this is an example of where perhaps being complacent, thinking about our new culture, it was what the, the Director of Finance's advice was accepted and not questioned about reporting and what the measures would be on this. I'm just saying it gets worse. The budget overspends will continue in 2016 and 2017. The total three-year overspend is £7.9 million. Councillor Dodd mentioned that we should be looking for more foster parents because a lot of that overspend is to do with the cost of fostering outside the borough. However, this is a request that should have come to Council six months ago in October. And that doesn't include the, Ofsted extra uh, the money for the Ofsted to, men to cause that n is needed to uh, support the Ofsted work. Half a, million and ro half a million already and more to come in April. And at the same time, adult services had an underspend of £890,000. This Adult services are unable to complete OT assessments for vulnerable adults within three months. That was a previous question from me, and I actually came across a piece of casework yesterday on this. Again, in the spirit of openness, this is something that members are reporting to you that needs to be looked at. And yet you've borrowed money from that budget, which is clearly not where there are problems to be addressed, in order to fund education. Was that underspend? Subjected to scrutiny at adult services? No. Will it be used to improve services? No, it's being used to shore up the children's budget. What's the point of having an agreed budget for service and not using it for that service, thus misleading the public? 
So here's a council heading for an extra £5 million unplanned, unplanned, unplanned spending in one area in the next three years and borrowing from another area that is performing inadequately to balance its books. Does this look like a council that's keeping a close eye on its finances in a difficult time? Does it look like a council who have the governance structures in place to manage their services and their finances and spot problems early so they can take action? I say it doesn't, and therefore we need to make sure that the money raised from local people is spent appropriately. We need to make sure the adult services 2% precept is spent on new initiatives for our older people and not on education. We need to make sure the extra 1.99% is spent on education, and if that isn't enough, then the majority party need to reconsider how they approach the vote voters of Wandsworth for money. I therefore urge you to support the amendment, ensure that Wandsworth uses the extra funding it's asking its voters for, for the purpose for which it has been raised. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Sweet. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I listened very carefully to Councillor Belton earlier talking about amendments for the sake of amendments and making trivial changes. And so let me just start by saying right back at you, this amendment here um, smacks of tabling amendments for the sake of it. And I think the reason for that is that Labour, the Labour group actually respects our record on council tax achieved over many, many years. Let me quote Councillor Hogg's own website. He says, it's right. It's right and fair to local people to keep council tax as low as we can. Well, this council has a policy of charging the least it can to deliver the best services it can. Tonight, I'm just going to talk very briefly about three things. The first thing is what council tax is for. The second thing, why lo low council tax is part of this group's aspiration agenda. And finally, how very seriously the council takes the decisions um, its decisions about spending other people's money. So firstly, Wandsworth is, as we all know, synonymous with low council tax. Councillor Osborne earlier told a story of, of doom and pessimism across council departments. I totally disagree with him. Um, and I think that our residence surveys, including um, <coughs> housing surveys, show that to be the case. I'm, I'm right in this. Wandsworth is not only synonymous with low council tax, it's synonymous with great services. Um, if you go back to the original committee report that this uh, paragraph is based on, you see, you see our, our policy in detail. Residents entrust us with their money to deliver services. Now, we listen to them um, and we use what they tell us to decide what the borough really needs. And we then set the lowest tax we can to deliver that. To do it the other way round and let the tax dictate the services is to let the cart lead the horse. And that's basically what Labour is suggesting tonight. Allocate tax to specific purposes. And I think we can do far better than that. So in the original report, it set out that we calculate our needed expenditure, then we subtract what we receive from other sources, and the amount remaining is what we set as council tax, what we collect as council tax. I know that's going to be really obvious to people on my side, but I think the Labour group sometimes gets it back to front. In their 2014 commission on Wandsworth Council Tax, they set out their aim to replicate what they call our low council tax policy. But in fact, our 2014 manifesto said no such thing. It focused on commitment, quality, community and aspiration. Low council tax is a result of running services well, to those ends and not a cause of it. We're a lean, low-tax council because we're obsessive about delivering high-quality, high-value services. And that's exactly why I'm also proud tonight that we're pushing to increase the tax modestly. Council tax needs to be reflective of the services that the borough needs. And um, as we're now extending our excellent services into new areas such as adult, adult social care, it's only fair to make a small increase while still keeping it at its very low level. It's just not necessary to make specific allocations using the new tax when we know full well we'll spend the money where we most need it. So secondly, why is council tax part of our aspiration agenda? I think that's really simple. Council tax hits the poorest hardest because it takes up a bigger proportion of their income. On the few occasions when council tax referenda have been held, 
It's actually always been the wealthier wards that have voted in favour of increases and the poorer, most deprived wards where they voted against them. And we can't alter the way the council tax system works in this chamber tonight. But we're right to be prudent with our spending because that's how we minimise the burden on our residents. The less we charge them, the more they have left at the end of the month. And I'm really concerned by the reckless way in this amendment that Labour proposes to spend our contingency funds. So how might Wandsworth residents spend their £50 a month tax saving compared to Labour Lambeth? Well, I don't think that's the council's business. Our business is delivering quality services then making sure that we leave our residents with as much as possible to spend how they wish to get on with their lives. And finally, very quickly, I just want to show how seriously we scrutinise our use of other people's money. Um, on the grants subcommittee, we, we meet twice a year and in January we, we spent uh, almost £200,000 giving grants to local groups. We could have spent more that night, but it was actually a great example of bipartisan working we all listened to each other, and although we had applica applications for nearly half a million pounds of funding, we always take the view in Grants Committee, as we do as a group on this side of the House, um, that the Wandsworth way is to spend only when we deliver value, and where we can look residents in the eye and say, we spent your money wisely. Thank you. Madam Mayor, members of the Council, they say growing up is optional, growing old is inevitable. Let me set the scene for you. Imagine sitting in your living room, staring at the walls. You're unable to read or watch the television because your sight is failing. You're unable to stand and walk to the bathroom because your body is failing. And sadder still, you're unable to delve into your lifetime memories because your cognition is failing. This is the reality for so many thousands of Wandsworth residents. You may be lucky and have some family help. Or like tens of thousands of Wandsworth residents, you may be reliant on the kindness of strangers and Wandsworth Council carers to help you do basic things like be hoisted in and out of your bed, like be taken to the toilet, like having your intimate areas washed and having your meals prepared for you. I want to take this opportunity to underline what I believe should be our commitment towards working for the good of perhaps, after children, the most vulnerable groups in our society, the elderly and the mentally and physically disabled. Someone like Tommy that Councillor Osborne spoke of earlier. They need a voice, not cuts. They need safety, not insecurity. We need robust systems in place to ensure that we deliver on our duty of care. And I know that you all feel this. Across the council, most money has been removed from the adult care and health budget. This is really, really very sad. We were hopeful an increase in £1 million raised by the proposed 2% precept on council tax would go directly towards adult care and health. But in fact, the cuts still amount to £2.9 million. We've not yet seen evidence that the money from a rise in council tax has been, has been ring-fenced to improve services as promised. These cuts don't merely equate to cancelling a day out to the seaside or you know, cutting off one night a week for, for you know, uh, bingo for the over 80s. These are very real things. These are very real issues for people in their homes that affect their livelihoods on a daily basis. We do understand the financial climate, of course. The financial pressures govern many important decisions and tough calls really do need to be made. Cuts are inevitable. We can all see that. But it's about where they occur. Let's not take it from those without a voice. Our officers work very, very hard, and relevant departments are stretched beyond capacity. However, the Council's current approach to contracting is to accept most economically advantageous provision. Excuse me, I'm no, I'm no English graduate, but that's a euphemism for cheapest. We're talking about providing the cheapest care to Wandsworth vulnerable adults. You may say we're providing high-quality cheap care, but actually, in many cases, we're not. In committee, we heard many, many examples of the fact that, actually, we've seen evidence a huge proportion of care agencies that we contract to provide care to the elderly, infirm, and vulnerable have CQC ratings of requiring improvement. We did challenge the officers, as was suggested we should do earlier, 
and were accused of playing politics. This is really very sad. Out in the community, I've had reports of many residents waiting days and days for their carers to arrive, bearing in mind that they're immobile, can't wash, can't eat without these carers arriving, and then carers having said that they've actually been there when they haven't. Now, the council reports that they've had very few complaints, but imagine now you're a vulnerable adult. You're too afraid to complain to anyone. What are you going to say? Are you going to tell your carer for, a, for, for potential fear of abuse or further neglect? Are you going to tell the council for fear that they'll never send you a carer? So what we've actually been, been receiving on the ward end are distressed family members who are so concerned about their loved ones. We are rewarding contracts to companies who don't pay the living wage. How can we expect retention of high quality staff delivering high qualities of care if we're not even hiring people that pay the living wage. You wouldn't want this for your mum or dad or someone that you cared about. Surely not. So why should we expect this to be acceptable for our residents that count on us to make decisions for them and to help them in their daily lives? We've recently seen un unfortunate circumstances behold our reputation in, in, in children's services. We've heard a lot about that tonight. But how much money can we cut before we see another group in Wandsworth on the receiving end of unacceptable standards? I ask you today to please follow through on any commitment to reduce some of the planned financial cuts to the adult care and social care services. I do actually believe that you care as much as I do about our vulnerable adults. Let's please just put robust systems in place to ensure we get high quality, good value care. Let's put any gains due to increase in council tax where it's so, so desperately needed. Thank you very much for listening. Councillor Carpenter. Expecting Councillor Lear first. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Wandsworth famously set a zero council tax in 1993, the first year it came into operation. It was able to do so because of the generous grants it had received from the central government. Since then, Wandsworth has become something of a government grant junkie relying on these grants to maintain its distinctively low council tax. Today, Wandsworth raises some 50 million in council tax, less than a third in relative terms of its neighbouring and proposed partner borough of Richmond. Unfortunately for Wandsworth, the Chancellor, George Osborne, announced in his 2015 budget that central government grants were to be progressively reduced uh, through the coalition government and are now to be phased out by 2020. This leaves Wandsworth in something of a financial bind. Its distinctively low council tax has led to a distinctively low council tax base. And government restrictions on council tax increases to under 2% per annum mean that it cannot raise council tax sufficiently to compensate for the fall in government grant. Nor is the additional precept on business rates, which the government is allowing councils, likely to bridge this gap. To square the funding circle, Wandsworth has been dipping into its substantial reserves, this year to the tune of some 14 million, to balance the budget. There's some scope to sell off more family silver and invest in income generating property assets, but the 15 million it plans to invest this year will generate less than a million of income. The basic is, problem is that, unlike Richmond, Wandsworth did not fix the roof when the sun was shining and put its finances on a long-term sustainable basis by increasing its council tax base. This is the basic reason why, since I joined the council in 2010, we have every year been faced with ever greater cuts in services. We face them again this year, and we are forecast to face them again in 2017-18 and 2018-19. The reason for this is a fundamental failure in Wandsworth Tory's financial strategy. They have run out of road, and they have nowhere out to go. They are stuck down a financial siding. Madam Mayor, we see this consequences in the uh, council tax motion before us. My colleague, Councillor Critchard, has spoken about the inadequate budgetary control in education and children's services in Wandsworth, reflecting the inadequate leadership management and governance revealed by the Ofsted report which we debated earlier this, in this meeting. This failure is forecast to cost Wandsworth Council taxpayer some 7.9 million, 
more than it should have over a three year period. Now, Councillor Dr. Alan Khan has drawn attention to the fact that far from increasing the adult care and health budget by the million which will be raised by the proposed 2% precept on council tax, Wandsworth Tories are proposing to reduce it by 2.9 million. Wandsworth residents are being swindled. Madam Mayor, I want to turn to the third part of our amendment, the London Living Wage. Now, I'm a supporter of the Resolution Foundation, a cross-party group currently chaired by David Willits, the former Tory minister. It was its work on the living wage which led Chancellor Osborne to announce in his 2015 budget the progressive introduction of the national living wage of 7.20 per hour in 2016, rising to 60% of median earnings around £9 per hour by 2020. On this side of the House, we welcome this initiative because we believe that everyone should be, be, be paid a wage they can live on. The government should not subsidise low-wage employers through in-work benefits. And the most effective way to reduce in-work benefits is to increase in-work wages. However, the level at which the national living wage is set at £7.20 per hour from April 2016 is significantly below the London living wage of £9.40 per hour so we need to go further. We welcome Wandsworth's adoption of the London living wage for its directly employed staff. But we have contracted out a significant proportion of our services. And it is clearly inequitable that someone providing the same service to Wandsworth should be paid more or less, depending entirely on whether that service is or is not contracted out. Research by the Resolution Foundation shows that in the medium term, the costs of introducing the London living wage are offset by the productivity gains achieved by having the more stable workforce that the London living wage allows, so reducing churn and tra training costs and improving the quality of the services provided. We believe that Wandsworth should make a start now on removing that inequity by progressively phasing in the London living wage as contracts come up for renewal. As the national minimum wage rises, the incremental costs of introducing the London living wage will fall as the gap between the two narrows. In our amendment, we suggest making a modest budgetary provision of one million to begin the process in 2016-17. Now, uh, Councillor Senior asked us how we would pay for this revolutionary programme. And yes, in the short term, we uh, do it out of contingencies, but uh, in the longer term, we have some uh, uh, suggestions that I'll come on to as to how we would actually do it. Uh, in another part of this uh, uh, <coughs> council, we are uh, accepting a uh, outsourcing of the financial transactions. In year one, it costs us a lot of money. In years two and there, there on, it saves us a lot of money. The same would be the case uh, here. Now, may I make an intervention? Yes, you may. I'd just be interested because we've heard um, lots from the Labour group over the last few years about um, all the cuts that we shouldn't be making. And I'd just be interested to know if they um, you know, understand the value of, of the cuts and the amount of the cuts that they've opposed and, and how big they actually think our contingencies are. It would be really interesting to, to understand if the millions and millions of pounds worth of cuts that they've opposed over the last um, several years that I've been on the council um, would be covered by any contingencies that we might have. Thank you for that intervention. Uh, we're t dealing with the forward programme, not the backward programme. I can't ch change the backward programme. The forward programme is three million. We have contingencies, I think, of 14 million. So there's, it's a, a mod modest amount of the contingency fund. Uh, now, Madam Mayor, on this side of the House, we've got uh, more progressive priorities. We are in favour of putting money into the pockets of the poor, not being in the pockets of property developers. So we will be voting against the overall budget framework. In our amendment, we make three modest proposals. Firstly, to hypothecate the 2% adult social care precept to the adult social care budget, so that Wandsworth residents can see that their precept is being spent on providing actual additional services. Secondly, to hypothecate the 1.99% increase in council tax to children's services budget so that we 
can begin to address the inadequacies revealed by the Ofsted report. Now, it said, why did we vote against the increase last time? It's because the report had not been published. We were being asked to vote half a million pounds sight unseen. Now the report has been published, we've seen it, we've seen how serious that things are, we know that we're going to need at least a million to put this right. And thirdly, to allocate a budget of one million to enable us to begin to introduce the London living wage to our contracted out services. We believe that these can be funded from further efficiency savings through the scale economies of joint procurement, not just with Richmond, but with other boroughs across London, through better management of the Wandsworth Building Estate and through better treasury management to further improve the returns on the 500 million we have invested. Madam Mayor, I commend our amendment to the Council and now I hand you over to Council Govindia to say a few words on behalf of his sponsors, Peter King, Bingle and the property developers. Um, Madam Mayor, that's a cheap shot, and you know it. And in fact, when you go and report it to your wife, she will tell you, Peter, you shouldn't have said it. Like she has often said to me in the past, I know Peter went a bit overboard. I did tell him not to say it. <laughs> I guess Marcy will say that to you tonight. Um, <laughs> so it is back to when the... When the cats away, mice dance, so Marcy obviously wears the pants in the house. Um, Madam Mayor, more seriously, Councillor, Councillor Senior made the obvious point that the settlement that we have has given a certainty not only this year but future years, which helps us plan not only our tax uh, that we need to uh, allow for this way, year, but plan how we are using our contingencies, our reserves, and also forward look at uh, what our needs might be in the borough and plan accordingly. Let me also look at a couple of things that Councillor Sweet said about why low tax is a welcome news for people on low incomes and fixed incomes particularly because unfortunately council tax is regressive, particularly when it comes to people with smaller take-home pays from which the, the tax has to be paid from. Um, and he's quite right that all the referenda data suggests that uh, it is the wealthier areas that are signing up to paying another penny more, but of course it is the poorer areas in, 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 in localities where there have been that, uh, that uh, um, it was quiet until recently. Um, Madam Mayor, can uh, I make an intervention, uh, please? Uh, an no, inter <laughs> no, um, uh, because I want to just uh, address the point you made about uh, the fact that we have a tax cut from the current mayor, and you suggested it mischievously that it might have been something to do with the election. Well, there haven't been elections the last eight years when the mayor has either frozen or given a cut. And in fact, this is in response to a promise he had made about the tax that he would uh, bequeath, or tax level he'll bequeath his successor. The Olympic levy was one that he said was for four years and that he would return or, or cease to collect it. There, there is the reason why uh, there is uh, that reduction in tax. I'm surprised that a politician should challenge another politician for a promise kept. Usually it is about a promise broken, but clearly Councillor Crutchard thinks that politicians shouldn't keep their promises. Well, Mayor, though, in stroke of family silver, I, mean, I sometimes wonder whether if the party opposite was in charge, there would have been any family silver in the first place. Um, and the chances are also to talk about reserves and contingencies to spend and allocate whether they would have been amassed in the first place. Because let me tell you why I think that I have no faith in that. It's because when Councillor uh, Carpenter talks about the London living wage cost will come down because the differential between the national living wage and the London living wage will narrow because the London national living wage will go up. Well, what makes you think that the London living wage will not go up? Because the whole reason why there is a London living wage is because the cost of living in London is higher than outside London, which is why there is a differential. What makes one think that that gap will narrow? That gap will remain forever 
because that is in fact the basis why there is a separate level of wages for, for, for London and, 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 and from, from elsewhere. Well, uh, Councillor Kim's intervention, Kadia's intervention was very interesting because I think what she was saying is that having in the past two years opposed number of efficiencies and savings suggestions from this side and either pledged to reinstate them or to oppose them and given a chance to reinstate them, that is the question she was asking. All those promises made, will you keep them? And if you were to keep them, what sort of contingency would you need? Because of lack of detail of that kind of probity on finances, that's why I say that the party opposite would have never amassed the family silver to sell in the first place. Madam Mayor, this is a budget for, for this year, but also a stable financial future for the next four years. I commend it. A recorded vote will now be taken on the amendment. The Chief Executive and the Director of Administration will call each councillor's name in turn and members should indicate whether they are for the amendment, against or abstaining. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can you remind us which non-interfering government and under what regulation says we have to have a recorded vote? <laughs> And I just want to be reminded, was it uh, Mr. Pickles as, uh, as Councillor I do Senior believe it was Mr. Pickles, yes. Well, isn't it about time we've got rid of him? Why can't we get rid of his nonsense regulation? Well, Madam Mayor, the matter now before the Council is the amendment proposed by Councillor Carvinter and seconded by Councillor Dr. Alan Khan to the recommendations in paragraph 4 of report number 1 concerning the Council tax and budget for 2016-17. When I call your name, Please indicate whether you are voting for the amendment, voting against the amendment, or abstaining. Councillor Dr. Alan Khan. For. Councillor Amash. For. Councillor Anderson. For. Councillor Belton. For. Councillor Caddy. Councillor Caddy. Yeah. Councillor Carpenter. For. Councillor Mrs. Clay. Yes. Councillor Cook. Yes. Councillor Mrs. Leone Cooper. For. Councillor Critchard. For. Councillor Crivelli. Against. Councillor Daly. For. Councillor Dawson. Against. Councillor Dodd. Against. Councillor Mrs. Dunn. Yes. Councillor Ellis. Yes. Councillor Field. Against. Yes. Councillor Gibbons. For. Councillor Gavindia. Yes. Councillor Mrs. Graham. Yes. Councillor Grimston. Yes. Councillor Mrs. Hampton. Yes. Councillor Ms. Hampton. Councillor Heaster. Yes. Councillor Hogg. Yes. Councillor Humphreys. Yes. Councillor Ben Johnson. Yes. Councillor Martin Johnson. Yes. Councillor Jones. Four. Councillor Lestot. Yes. Councillor Lua. Yes. Councillor MacDonald. Four. Councillor Madden. I'm oh, sorry, Councillor McCausland. McCausland. <laughs> Councillor Mrs. McDermott. Yes. Councillor McKinney. Four. Councillor O'Brien. Yes. Councillor Osborne. Four. Councillor Peterkin. Yes. Councillor Ryder. Yes. Councillor Salia. Yes. Councillor Senior. Yes. Councillor Speck. Four. Councillor Stokes. Four. Councillor Mrs. Strickland. Yes. Councillor Mrs. Suffers. Councillor Sweet. <laughs> Councillor Mrs. Sutton. Councillor Mrs. Sutton. You better do what the whip does. Just the way to show his solidarity. Councillor Sweet. Councillor Thomas. Councillor Ms. Torrington. Councillor Mrs. Tracy. Councillor Wall. Thank you.
The amendment was lost, 18 to 32. Uh, so the uh, uh, matter now before the Council, Madam Mayor, concerns the recommendations paragraph 4 of Report Number 1 concerning the Council Tax and Budget for 2016-17. When I call your name, please indicate... Uh, sorry, Mr Martin. Mr Martin. Excuse me. Voting against them or abstaining. Councillor Dr Alan... Sorry. Uh, Can I just make things a bit simpler? We, we are going to vote for A to F but against I G. I've got a choice but to do this. But you're, you're not going to do every single paragraph, are you? No, just the Council. Just which paragraph is that? Uh, this is paragraph four. Yeah, but which recommendation in it? The whole of the paragraph. Because there are recommendations A to G, and we wish to support A to F, but be against G. We're, we're, we're voting on the whole of the paragraph, unless you go amend a paragraph, unless we go, unless we issue a further amendment. Why can we, why can we not? Because it's for the whole paragraph, unless you want to go amendment by amendment. You need to propose an amendment. That seconded. So, so, so the the uh, now we have to do it again, all the way through the motion. The, 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 the amendment. The matter now before the Council concerns uh, the uh, recommendation accepting, uh, uh, I think, number G in paragraph 4 of report number 1 concerning the Council tax and budget for 2016-17. It is to remove G. When I call your name, if you wish to remove G, um, uh, could you indicate whether you're voting for the recommendations, voting against them or abstaining? Councillor Dr. Alan Carr. Councillor Ambash. <laughs> it's, sufficient, it's sufficient to say four. <laughs> Councillor Anderson. Councillor Belton. Councillor Cabby. Yes. Councillor Carpenter. Four. Councillor Mrs. Clay. Yes. Councillor Cook. Yes. Councillor Mrs. Leonie Cooper. Coun four. <laughs> Councillor Critchard. Four. Councillor Crivelli. Yes. Councillor Daly. Four. Councillor Dawson. Councillor Dodd, yes. Councillor Mrs Dunn, yes. Councillor Ellis, yes. Councillor Field, yes. Councillor Gibbons, yes. Councillor Govindia, yes. Councillor Mrs Graham, yes. Councillor Grimston, yes. Councillor Mrs Hampton, yes. Councillor Mrs Hanson, yes. Councillor Heaster, yes. Councillor Hogg, yes. Councillor Humphreys, yes. Councillor Ben Johnson, yes. Councillor Martin Johnson, yes. Councillor Jones, yes. Councillor Lescott, yes. Councillor Lua, Councillor MacDonald, Councillor McCausland, yes. Councillor Mrs McDermott, yes. Councillor McKinney, Four. Councillor O'Brien, yes. Councillor Osborne, Four. Councillor Peaskin, yes. Councillor Ryder, yes. Councillor Salia, yes. Councillor Senior, yes. Councillor Speck, Four. Councillor Stokes, Four. Councillor Mrs Strickland, yes. Councillor Mrs Sutters, yes. Councillor Four. Sweet, yes. Councillor Thomas, Councillor Ms. Torrington, Mrs. Tracy, yes. Councillor Walsh. The, the amendment is lost, 19 to 31. So, Madam Mayor, we now move to the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, 
recommendations that are in paragraph 4 report number 1 concerning the council tax and budget 2016-17. Uh, when I call your name, please indicate whether you, vote, you are voting for the recommendations in paragraph 4 report number 1, voting against them or abstaining. Councillor Alan Khan. Councillor Ambash. Councillor Anderson. Councillor Belton. Councillor Caddy. Councillor Carpenter. Councillor Mrs. Clay. Councillor Cook. Councillor Mrs. Leonie Cooper. Four. Councillor Critchard. Councillor Crivelli. Councillor Daly. Councillor Dawson. Councillor Dodd. Councillor Mrs. Dunn. Councillor Ellis. Councillor Field. Councillor Gibbons. Councillor Gavindia. Councillor Mrs. Graham. Councillor Grimston. Yes. Councillor Mrs. Hampton. <laughs> Councillor Ms. Hanson. Councillor Heaster. Councillor Hogg. Councillor Humphreys. Councillor Ben Johnson. Councillor Martin Johnson. Councillor Jones. Councillor Lescott. Councillor Lewitt. Councillor MacDonald. Councillor McCausland. Councillor Mrs. McDermott. Councillor McKinney. Councillor O'Brien. Councillor Osborne. Councillor Peterkin. Councillor Wright, Councillor Salier, Councillor Senior, Councillor Speck, Councillor Stokes, Councillor Mrs Strickland, Councillor Mrs Suffers, Councillor Sweet, Councillor Thomas, Councillor Mrs Torrington, Councillor Mrs Tracy, Councillor Walsh. <laughs> the motion is carried 49 to 1.